Hello everybody, welcome back to the Giveaway Motovlog channel. So in this video I'm going to show you how to replace the fork seals as well as the dust seals on the Suzuki Van Van built in 2003. So as I said in one of my last videos, both of my, both of my fork legs started leaking here. Look at this one, how dirty this is. And look at this one. Look at the cracks in the dust seal, look. So I bought the replacement made by the American brand All Balls Racing. So this is the, the part number. It's basically a set of dust seals and the, the oil seals. So both of them are here. It comes with a nice sticker out there. So yes, uh, I've never done this before. But I watched some videos on YouTube how to do this, so um, I just thought that I may give it a try. It's not uh, a rocket science after all. If I'm stuck in the middle of somewhere, if I can't fix anything, then maybe I'll just disassemble the forks and take, the, take them to, uh, to a workshop, if I can't do it. But uh, I'll try to do my best, okay? So there is my toolkit. The bike is ready. Let's start. You gotta put it over there and then just twist, twist the, twist the tool, yes. Just put it over here and try to fix this one. Yeah, try it. Yeah. By the way guys, I just forgot to mention a disclaimer. Okay, I've never done this before. So uh, do it at your own risk. I'm not a professional mechanic. So I'm just improvising. I'm just trying to learn to do these things on my own. Okay, so uh, what I did already is I undid this one over here, this bolt, holding the wheel. Uh, next thing I started to do is I started to loosen, you know, the, the front wheel. Okay, so I just loosened it. I didn't remove it completely because the wheel is still held by the, um, the brake calipers. So um, the next thing on the to-do list is to remove the brake calipers from here and then just remove this long bolt, the axis bolt which is holding the whole wheel and then the wheel will just come off. But before doing that make sure you secure your bike somehow. Okay, so you, the bike has to be standing like that. Without the wheel make sure it doesn't fall over. So I'm gonna now find uh, some way, you know, some some wooden blocks in order to in order to somehow, you know, stabilize the bike over here. So I will put the engine on top of the blocks, so the wheel will be hanging. Okay, so it's the next morning. Yesterday my kids didn't let me do it. So, um, yeah. This is how I'm gonna fix the bike against the wall when I remove the wheel. So it is sitting, see, against the wall. I put the rack here in order to avoid any scratches to the handlebar. And, um, yeah. Now I'm going to just tilt the bike to the left side in order to remove the brake caliper. After removing that, I will remove the wheel and then slowly I will remove these two bolts here. I will remove these two bolts here. Okay, and I'll do undo this one and undo these top, top ones and then this whole thing should loosen up and then be removed. Okay, so let's go. Clipper undone. You see the oil residue? It's all here. Imagine if it was hitting the the brake rotor. That wouldn't be good news. It's very difficult to remove the wheel while the bike is sitting with all of its weight with the wheel attached. So I brought my, my lifter, I'm going to use it in order to increase, in order to raise the bike by the engine. 
and then when I do that I will throw in the block so the block is sitting underneath and this way I will loosen the the front wheel and hallelujah guys I don't I didn't have to actually lift the bike all the way up and then my initial plan was to put that wooden block underneath the engine so what I did I just lifted the bike by this part by the frame and so the wheel got very loose you see so what I now just remove the spindle that's it make sure you mark where the speed center is sitting so it should be hitting against this recess here you see okay so once the spindle is out the rest should be easy you see the bike the wheel already came off uh-huh next thing don't forget okay don't lose these uh, these bearings okay and here is the speed sensor it will be hanging in the air over there okay but uh, when you are installing it all back make sure you clean all these things and then grease it okay so the wheel is out by the way I never done this before I mean since since the day that I bought this bike I've never removed the wheel I've never you know uh, removed um, the tube inside so it's me doing this for the first time so this is how it's sitting okay I know it's not the most reliable way so I'm gonna put that wooden block underneath the engine just in case okay in case it falls over yeah because I will be playing with this fork you know turning it left and right I want to make sure the bike is stable and secure okay so as I said earlier now I'm gonna remove these two brackets over here before I undo these ones just a little bit don't remove them all the way because it will shoot out this fork is loaded with the spring just be careful don't remove it all the way don't remove the bolt just loosen it okay just like that this one is 14 millimeter this is maybe 12 or 13 because it's much smaller than this one when you're working on the fork make sure the bike is stable so it doesn't fall off you see I've loosened this one but don't remove it all the way you may just lose it let it sit here okay now this one for this one let me try the 12 millimeter one the 12 millimeter socket works here Good. just a little bit as I said don't remove it all the way yeah the torques by the way here are not very big so good it's not very difficult to undo these bolts okay these ones are off these ones are off so getting the fork off would be easy and yeah another thing is you gotta remove the fender over here because the fender is attached to the forks this one is I think 10 millimeter yeah 10 millimeter there are two here and two here 10 millimeter bolts so these are undone this one this one goes next you see the fork is already moving here see look yeah so I'll just uh, remove the defender before it just damages it okay let me just use the 10 millimeter over here and see if this one works yeah the 10 millimeter good very easily undone so here is the front fender bolts they have to be removed for the fork to come off so this is the right leg okay guys so what I did just now is I loosened the bolt which is sitting underneath the fork over there so you don't you don't need to remove it all the way until as of now you just need to loosen it okay so I used these pliers over here to hold this uh, the fork to fixate the fork and then just with this particular um, tool here 
I loosened it a little bit. So this top bolt here is also loose. Now the next step is to start actually removing and disassembling all of that. Okay, don't don't remove all of that because oil will just pour out of the fork. Okay, now is the time to disassemble everything. Now that this bottom bolt is free, we can now remove the top. This one, by the way, is 20 millimeter. So remove this one over here, the top nut. Okay, don't lose anything. Uh, I've already removed it before, so this thing was sitting in here, and this is how it was all assembled. Okay, so consider removing this one first. Okay, and you need to also somehow mark the sequence so you don't forget where all of that goes. Okay, so first goes the nut, second goes that thing, third, there is the spacer. Okay. Don't confuse all of that. For me, it's good that the camera is recording all of that. And then there is the actual spring. And the spring is, I don't know if you can notice it, here is, I think it's a bit wider in the bottom and narrower in the top. So there's your spring. Okay, I took a bottle here, you know. So there is some oil residue over there. Remove all the excess oil into this can. Okay, don't put the rag there in order to not make any mess. Okay, just like that. Now it's free, there is no oil. So let's remove these ones, the dust covers, you see they're all cracked, that's why I'm just removing it and it will be going to the rubbish, just like that. And then inside there, there is the, um, the ring, okay, spring-loaded ring, which is holding the, the oil seal in place. So the next step is to just remove that that ring over here. So here is the ring. It came loose. It's not rusty. So if it's rusty, make sure you clean it when you are assembling your fork. So put that aside. There is no oil. So in order to completely remove the tube, you have to remove the damper. The damper is sitting inside over here. So what we did earlier, we loosened this bolt here. Now is the time to remove it completely so that we can free the damper which is holding the the tube. For that reason, remember I have this tool here, you just put it inside and undo the damper. I removed the Torx, the Torx bolt down there and it let me remove, yeah, here it is, free! This is the old uh, ceiling, I'm gonna remove it wash everything and then assemble everything back here is the fork oil i bought it's one liter of french ipon uh, fork oil the grade is uh, 10 w10 so it should be okay here is all the ready stuff the damper is inside let's just remove it this is how it's look like Okay, if you are doing this alone, if you like me decided to do this all by yourself, make sure you mark everything and you don't confuse when you assemble the whole stuff. So before assembling it and replacing the seals, I think it would be good to wash everything. For this purpose I'm using a kerosene. Why not petrol? Because petrol is more abrasive, it's more harsh to the rubbers, you know, and the, in general substances. And it's, you know, it smells, it's not good, you know, to work with. But kerosene is much milder solution. So I'm using this here. I will put the kerosene in. Okay. And I will wash all the parts with the kerosene inside. Okay, let's go. So this is the nut which is sitting on top of the fork. Just make sure it is all clean.
there is a gasket, you know, a rubber gasket that prevents any oil leaks on the top. Okay, so make sure it's all clean. After that, you move on to the next part, and so on and so forth. So take a clean cloth, make sure you wipe it all from any dirt and debris. Good, good as new. So, I'm washing the, the fork tube, the fork leg, with the kerosene. Good. Now it's all clean. So I'm checking the inside. It's all clean, it's all good. Right. So here are all the parts which I have already cleaned. Okay, this one, I assembled this one already. So it's now waiting for all to be assembled. So uh, the fork is washed. The next step is to assemble it. But I think I deserved a piece of cake and some coffee. Now we are just assembling it all back. Just don't confuse where everything is going. So from how I marked things, this is how you were installing this one, this particular kit. Okay, so slowly throw it in. Okay, this is what should come out from here. This is the next thing. Okay, having that sitting in place, what you do next is, while holding this bottom end here, you are squeezing it into the fork. Okay. Okay, having done that, next thing you do is you are putting this bolt inside. So don't forget to take the pull and tighten it. So um, this needs to be tightened to around 25 to 30 Newton meters. I'm not using a torque wrench, so I'm just using common sense. Okay, so I titled the, this bolt over here. And the next thing we do is we put the, the ceiling on. So here is a set of ceilings. Right, and it should be sitting this way up. But don't forget that you need to put some kind of a plastic bag, okay, add some grease so that, you know, the, so that the, the oil seal doesn't get scratched and doesn't get torn. So here at the point of entry, just add some oil, okay. Okay, now this is the new one. Let's try to squeeze it in. Good, it went in. Let's pull it all the way down. Okay, so the next part is a bit tricky. So um, ideally, I should have some kind of a tool, you know, that would you know press this thing inside, that hits on the top. Because I don't have that tool, I will now improvise. I'll find a way to put this in. Okay, so maybe I'll just use a wooden wood, you know, a, a wood stick put on two sides, and then with the hammer I'll just try to hit it and put it inside, just like that. Okay, guys. So. Uh, here is the fork, 
the oil seal is there, the retaining uh, spring is there, and the dust cover. Because um, the oil seal and the dust cover I'm using are not the original Suzuki parts. Okay, you can see the difference between the old balls racing and the Suzuki OEM part. To the right of me is this one is the OEM Suzuki one, and this is the old ball part all balls racing OEM. You can see that you know the one on the left, which is the new one, is maybe one or two millimeters wider. It's taller, okay? So um, yes, that's something to bear in mind. Because of this, the space, the dust, you know, the dust cover here is bulging a little bit, maybe one or two millimeters, exactly the width of the old balls racing oil seal but it's okay I think one or two millimeters of bulging here is not a big deal it's still moving absolutely fine and it's not being undone so it's sitting very good okay so the next thing that we're doing is we are adding oil all right so here I have the the measure according to the manual 230 milligrams milliliters of oil should go inside here. Right, let's go. 200 almost. 230. Okay. So around 230. Maybe 240. Not a big deal. Okay. Okay, so it would also help if you let the oil go all the way till the bottom so just make some five to ten squeezes squeezing this is not easy okay so we do that in order to make sure that the oil fills all the internals and the damper inside And I think we're also doing that in order to build some, some pressure. Okay, so the oil is inside, I pumped it up. Now the next stage is to put the spring in. Good, so it's just plushed, plushed into the water, dropped into the oil. Okay, and then you need to extend it all the way out. Put this washer here, okay. So you check it, that it fit okay. Good. Now it's all flat, it's lying there inside. Then you're putting this tube. Good. And you cap it off. Okay, so uh, here is the bike. Before you put the, the leg in, just make sure you clean the seating place. Okay, just like so, the, the top one, exactly the same way to make sure there is no dust, no uh, debris, good. Alright guys, so here is the fork installed on the bike, the right one which I was working on. Now I'm gonna go and uh, finish the, the left one. So I tightened. I tightened the top, I tightened this one and this one, these two bolts over here. Okay, I put the brake caliper here. All that needs to be done is just installing the right one. There is one problem I have though, but uh, so I will not install the, the second fork leg today because I had a small crash if you followed one of my videos in the past. Okay, so here is the fender and you see there is the, this is the crack. So I'm going to take the fender to the plastic restorer and they're going to glue it all so I can then install it onto the bike. So I hope this video helped you and maybe it will help you to do your own DIY with your fork. But uh, let me know if you have any questions and um, I'll try to, to help you with, with any of that. Okay, stay tuned and bye.